Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Surrender all. Simply devoted to you, oh Lord. I lose my life to follow this life that I live is not enough, but leaves for me to leave is Christ. Bless his name and say, Lord, tonight, do a work in my heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, please pray inside and in the overflow. The spirit of the living God is everywhere ensuring that we get blessed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let your word transform us, O oh God. Say, Lord, change me. For the more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. The more I know you, Truly the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Yeah. The more I know you, truly the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. The more I know more I want to hear you, Jesus, more of you. More of you, Jesus, more of you. Make it your prayer tonight, Jesus, more of you. That's our prayer tonight. Jesus, more of you. Say, Lord, more of you in my life. Jesus, more of you. Jesus, more of you. Jesus. More of your wisdom, Jesus, more of you, Jesus, more of you, more of your power, more of you, more of your wisdom, more of you, more of your word.
Go ahead and hold your hands together and just pray in the Holy Ghost for five minutes. Inside and outside, let's hold our hands as the family of faith. Join with the family in heaven. Make sure you are praying in tongues. But ye beloved, building yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You've not been filled with the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you. We are the victorious one. Go ahead and pray in tongues. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself, builds up himself, builds capacity in the spirit. Come on, make sure you're praying outside. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rakata Balanabosh. Yes, Lord. Jesus. More of you. For it's in your light that we see light. Thou will show us the path of life. For in your light we see light. Hallelujah. 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 It's important that our reception of God's word and God's spirit be conscious. Are you listening to me? You have to plan for it. You have to prepare. Prepare your spirit. Say, Lord, I didn't just come to hear stories. I came to receive more. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and when there was no more empty vessel, the oil stopped flowing. And so perpetually, you must be in that position that says, Lord, I thank you for the things you have done yesterday. I thank you for the anointing and the grace. Thank you for healing the sick. Thank you for what you are doing in my life. But in your presence, I pray, breathe upon me once again. That the wind of your spirit will quicken me. Make me come alive. Quicken my understanding to be able to comprehend the deep things. Cause me to see light in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, many things happen in the glory of God. Aside from signs, wonders, and miracles. One of the the things that happen in the glory of God is that you are lifted. Hallelujah. You are translated into a higher realm of spiritual perception so that you are able to comprehend. He said, who has known the mind of Christ that he may instruct him? He said, but we have. It has been given to us. We have access to the mind of Christ. We have access illuminated by the light of his spirit so that you can see as he sees you can interpret things as he interprets and then you will walk in his victory so be conscious of his presence and his glory wherever you are inside or outside it's always the union of the spirit and the word he said the spirit and the bride say come it is the spirit and the bride that can tell the word to come so you are in partnership with the holy spirit asking the word to come say the spirit alongside the bride will command the word to come and every time the word comes there is a performance hallelujah lord we thank you 
So we bow as we enter the throne room and we cast ourselves down at your feet you are holy thou art worthy there is none like you for in your presence that is where we must be Lord we bow as we enter the throne room we cast ourselves down at your feet come on Shabbat the Lord he alone is worthy you are holy Thou art only, there is none like you, for in your presence, that is where we must be. For in your presence, Lord, in your presence, that is where we must be. It's in your presence. That's truly where I must be. It's in your presence. That is where I must be. The presence of God makes a rod to board. The presence of God stops bread from decay. That is where I must be. For he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty and I will say of the Lord thou art my strong my strength, my fortress, my rock Hallelujah it's in your presence that is where we must be that is where I must be that is where I must be For there is safety in your presence There are miracles in your presence There's deliverance in your presence I'm changed in your presence I become wiser in your presence I am strengthened in your presence In your presence That is where I must be This is part of Koinonia It's a culture of worship In your presence That is where I must be In your presence that is where I must be. Beautiful you are, wonderful you be. You are glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reason. You are glorious, my God, beautiful you are, wonderful you be, you are glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward. Glorious, just the voices. My God, beautiful you are, wonderful you've been. You are glorious. You're faithful in all your ways. Faithful in all your ways. My help and my reward. You are glorious. Beautiful you are, wonderful you are, wonderful you are, you are glorious.
glorious. For you are glorious. You are glorious. You are glorious. You are glorious. your hands fall like rain my father fall like rain spirit of the living God upon your people fall like rain receive it in fire and his power outside fall upon your people the power of God is touching people. Receive it. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Receive it. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands, everyone, for it falls like the dew of heaven. Rain upon your people, O oh God. Rain upon your people. Fall like fire. Quicken your people to a higher realm of power, a higher realm of insight, a higher realm of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, let it cause your eyes to see, your ears to hear. In the name of Jesus. When you are exposed to the presence and the glory of his majesty then you are changed it's an atmosphere it's not just a person it's an atmosphere this is why you can be touched from anywhere it's an atmosphere it's a circumference of glory that anyone that dares to plunge into it will experience the tangible change a quickening in your mind not every revelation can be taught some are byproducts of his glory it's a quickening of the spirit that's why we are exposed it's not just about falling down it's an atmosphere and the create the effect it creates in your spirit drink of that atmosphere it will change you Hallelujah. 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 the influence of demons not in this place we believe in the works of Christ and this is a place for emancipation three people hallelujah you will be free for death cannot dwell in his presence he is light therefore in the name that is above all names three of you please ushers I need them here you will know three of you in the name of the Lord Jesus, at the count of three, that devil, that demon cannot stand. No, not in God's presence. Hallelujah. 
For he gave us authority over unclean spirits to emancipate his people in the name above all names at the count of three. One, two, three. There's one of them outside. That's one of them on the floor. Bring them. That devil is a liar. There's one outside. Two are inside. One is outside. One is in this row. That devil, I command him to set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. For your name is holy. You are holy. Holy Lord. The power of God touches the one person outside under the influence of all kinds of manifestations of darkness. Holy, holy are you, Lord. devil of darkness let this guy go now come out of him in the name of Jesus every foul devil I set you free right now from every yoke of bondage there's one person outside please those outside lift your hands lift your hands those outside by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the light of God shine upon every darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost bring out that one person under the captivity of darkness. Be free now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it is fire upon you. No devil can stand it. You came here captive in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free. Hallelujah. the Jeremiah I'm seeing there is another Jeremiah is taller than you Jeremiah if you are Jeremiah you can come out here the Lord has a word for a Jeremiah is a guy it could be your son name I don't know taller than this gentleman here. The Lord shows me a word for Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Well, since you came on, let me at least pray for you. You don't come out here and receive nothing. Bless him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah, please, when you find that person is important, we need to pray for his family. Be seated. God bless you. Hug someone. Tell them I love you. Say it, hug someone, don't sit down.
Good to see everyone again. Let's get to the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, look at me. Look at me. No, leave I alone. The Lord says I should impart upon you the grace to see. In the name of the Lord Jesus, fire on you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, I welcome every one of you. This is Koinonia. We've been, we began towards the end of last year considering a series on the full gospel. Hallelujah. Someone's auntie just gave birth. I'm hearing the cry of a child in a labor room and the Lord says it's somebody's auntie that just gave birth. Just to announce. Don't just rejoice for nothing. If it's not your auntie, we're not lying here. Don't clap. If your auntie is not pregnant, the child will not jump out of the air. Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we began a series on the full gospel. And then we had to pause and now we'll continue. Hallelujah. The full gospel is a teaching that attempts to harmonize the several revelations of the spirit that had been revealed to the church especially the church in Nigeria. Hallelujah. And we began to examine the fact that the goal of the full gospel is to bring us into maturity. Hallelujah. That God in his character reveals himself in facets and dimensions. Hallelujah. And that as a result of pressing into God, several people through dispensations have been able to press into some dimensions of God. And have come up with certain revelations. Some of them have received exaggerations and imbalances. Hallelujah. And the goal is to be able to bring the church into harmony. And so we began to um, outline the fact that we'll examine the seven major doctrines that characterize the Nigerian church. Hallelujah. And we listed them. Number one, the gospel of grace. Number two. The gospel of faith or what we know as the word of faith. Hallelujah. Number three. What's number three? Hallelujah. You've forgotten. The gospel of holiness. Hallelujah. Number four. Demonology. Satan, demonology and deliverance. Hallelujah. Number five. The gospel of prosperity and we're in the sixth one tonight we'll be considering the gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit you don't want to miss this teaching this is a solid teaching tonight the gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit hallelujah In a street in the United States of America called Azusa, there was a great man of God who had a lecture and used to teach students called Charles Farnham. Hallelujah. Was a great man, fiery man of the spirit. This was during the revivals of the generals. Now they had seen the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They had seen miracles because people like Alexander Doway, um, people like... Um, uh, you know um, what's his name sorry yes Maria Woodward Ita and several people had carried the fire and the power of the spirit they had seen miracles people like Amphi McPherson the woman who would do stretcher only meetings so they had seen the revivals of the spirit but then this gentleman would be teaching and then racism was very strong in the western world hallelujah and there was a black one-eyed man one of his eye wasn't so good to worsen the case he was black and then he was one-eyed and so he wouldn't be allowed to join the school of ministry 
Hallelujah. And that gentleman would stand outside the class and just be listening. And Charles began to teach them about the mysteries of the kingdom. Began to expound scriptures, just like Koinonia. And the guy would stand outside, the only man in the overflow. And he would listen. Hallelujah. Little would we know that that man would be the pioneer of what we know in proper to be the charismatic move of the spirit. What we call the Azusa Street Revival. Hallelujah. It took the fire, the manifestation. It was said historically that the same way the flames of fire fell upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2. That was the exact same way the flames of fire fell. They saw it. The cloven tongues. It fell upon them on that street called Azusa. And it sparked a revival of the charismatic move of the spirit. That men in mass, he that told, it used to be single individuals, all right? And then people come to receive. But now it, there was a widespread manifestation of men demonstrating the character of the spirit. Solid power. They did impossible things in mass. And that fire began to translate from one city to one city one country to one country one continent to another hallelujah then somehow it fell in africa also and our fathers caught that fire hallelujah great men who walked in power not many of them are known alongside with men like apostle babalola we only know him because he's a founder of a ministry but there were many more hallelujah men and women who caught this fire suddenly men began to press into certain dimensions of god and they saw that the holy ghost can take hold of a man such that he begins to exhibit his character in that man hallelujah they saw ordinary men doing the deeds of god men who you couldn't stand close to them hallelujah meet us away from them you were under the anointing and they were exhibiting the character of another being just like a demon would possess a man and the man would assume the character of that demon hallelujah and the holy spirit began to give them insight and that sparked a dimension of power in the church like we have never seen and through the years especially in nigeria we had great men and women now listen don't confuse just the working of miracles or just provoking things through faith with the charismatic move the charismatic move was a demonstration of the spirit it wasn't just healing alone are you listening to me it was a demonstration of the character of the spirit men who did things it wasn't just healing the sick on the street their presence Devils cried at their presence. They did all kinds of, they performed more miracles unconsciously than they did consciously. Hallelujah. They would get up from a seat, you come and sit back there and devils would leave. It was an awesome display of the spirit. It opened up a new and a strange dimension of the prophetic. Hallelujah. And today we have great ministries who still carry that banner. Ministries like Christ Embassy. A typical replica of the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. The demonstration of the power of the spirit. In a charismatic move, it's not an individual that just... Are you following me now? Other moves, an individual carried the fire, then others came to receive. But in the, a, charisma, a typical charismatic move has the least person able to dispense... The things of the spirit there are ministries that you see one geo all right one geo if it's not around nothing happens but there are ministries that even if you call five people and say just go out they will be able to reproduce the demonstration of the spirit that's a charismatic move hallelujah the word charismatic comes from the greek word charis grace a demonstration of the grace of god upon a man hallelujah praise god and 
A lot has happened to this move over the years. And tonight we'll be examining it. Hallelujah. When you put on your television, many things happen to you. You smile, you get angry. Hallelujah. Because there are different kinds of what we know today to be the charismatic move. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2. Where's the foundation of this gospel of power? Please follow this teaching tonight. It's powerful. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2. It was that move of the spirit that brought us into the consciousness of what we know as the presence of God. People didn't know so much about the presence of God and the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Now you hear people say, I sat down. Just like it's happening to some of you. And it's like electricity all over my body. Some of you are shaking, vibrating. This is a manifestation. It was that move that began to bring us into this consciousness. Hallelujah. Many people didn't even know what it stood for. Many of you get to pray and there are, there's all kinds of things happening to you. Warm sensation, cold sensation, fire on your eyes, your feet, your knees. You know, all of these moves of the spirit. 1 Corinthians 2. You don't want to imagine how I love teaching about things like this. Praise God. And I, brethren... This is Paul speaking. When I came to you, I came not with the excellency of speech. I wish the church in Nigeria can read this verse again and again. Or of wisdom. This wisdom is Sophia, human wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. Two, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in so much trembling. Verse 4, 1, to read. And my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. Why? Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Hallelujah. And so this became the foundation of what we know as the gospel of power. Hallelujah. Certain people were tired of a dead religion. Of people coming in. The sick would come in and go back. Demons would come in, escort people to meetings. And they would sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs for hours. And these demons would go back. People came oppressed and went back oppressed. And the Holy Ghost began to move in certain people and said, There is a dimension of me. That must be opened up to the body the spirit of power that the power of the holy ghost can be accessible for a believer to wrought victories in righteousness hallelujah another scripture first corinthians 14 4 sorry first corinthians 4 there are great ministries that have this as their slogan ministries like spirit embassy hubert angel 1 Corinthians 4.20 Are you there? One to read. For the kingdom of God is not in word. One more time. What do you understand by that statement? Hallelujah. What do you understand by that statement? If I say Jimmy is a man, not a woman. Is that clear enough? He said, for the kingdom of God. In other words, the reality of the kingdom of God is expressed in the midst of men, not just by words. Words are not sufficient to be able to articulate the reality of the kingdom. It is in the demonstration of power. When the power of the Holy Spirit is made visible, comes into the scene, then people are able to see the reality of the manifestation of the glory of God. Are you following me now? And Paul said, when I came to you, 
You know why Paul said that? Because Paul was an intellectual. He was not just a dummy. I hope you understand. But he said, when I came, I didn't just come with oratory, the ability to combine words and speak nicely. For that alone is insufficient to bring you into the reality of the kingdom experience. He said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but I demonstrated something among you that proved the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So, the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of, of, of power seeks to tell the church that there is more to the manifestation of the kingdom of God than just speaking. Are you listening to me? Just a nice, well-prepared sermon. And that true transformation, that the body of Christ will not come into the full realization of the kingdom experience, both as um, an evangelical experience and as a charismatic Pentecostal experience just with talking. In other words, you can't keep talking to people about divine health. Are you listening to me? You can't keep talking to people about healing. You can't keep talking to people about certain things. The gospel of power tells you that there must be a demonstration. That the kingdom of God is the expression of that kingdom in number one words but number two it is validated with power i said the kingdom of god in other words the manifestation of the influence of the father is not just the issue of talk are you listening to me miracles signs wonders breakthroughs these are the visible manifestations of the glory of God. Please let me tell you something. The manifestation of the glory of God is not a cloud. It's not some mist. Listen, the beauty of all those things is that you leave that place with an experience. Are you listening to me? Say kingdom experience. Kingdom experience is not just in words. If I ask you now, what was the first message? That was preached when you came for koinonia you cannot even remember but if i ask you tell me one remarkable experience you say ah i remember i brought one brother that was just shouting i won't keep quiet five minutes later that guy was praying in tongues that's an experience are you listening to me people can forget talk and words but an experience initiates them into the reality of anything hallelujah this is why when you go to a herbalist he doesn't do too much of talking, correct? He just bamboozles you with experiences. And you have to just calm down and say, this man is serious. He's not a talkative. For instance, as soon as you enter his place, you see him and then you don't see him again and then you see him. And he says, sit down. You say, Baba, I'll do anything you want me to do. One experience. Hallelujah. You're going to be understanding certain powerful spiritual keys about the gospel of power. So miracles, signs, and wonders are the visible manifestation of the glory and the kingdom. Without the manifestation of the miraculous, I'm telling you the gospel of the kingdom, Christianity, what we know as um, Christianity is powerless. If an unbeliever stands and tells you that I believe in whatsoever I believe. And a Christian comes and says, look, Jesus is Lord over all. He came and demonstrated victory over sin and over Satan. Hallelujah. And you are able to demonstrate it. That there is this gentleman, come sir, just a minute. Hallelujah. That this guy comes in a drunkard. Comes in drinking and smoking. And one encounter with the power of god no withdrawal symptoms this guy does not have appetite for liquor again doesn't have appetite for smoking again there is an experience are you listening to me this guy if you ask him to preach he will tell you his experience you know why many believers do not have messages we lack the experience of the kingdom life hallelujah this is why we borrow messages from youtube google all kinds of things Authentic Christianity is supposed to be a byproduct of a tangible experience where you encounter the reality of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah.
And so it's not enough to say this is this, this is that. There must be a proving, a validation. And this is why the Christian experience of many believers is not strong. Hallelujah. We can sing and chorus, Jesus is Lord. What manner of man is Jesus? He made the sea to, to, uh, to what? He made the sea to... He made the blind to see. He made this and that to happen. And many people with unbelief, he made the blind to... But you see, it has not translated into a real Christian experience. So our unbelief has gotten so used to those songs, we don't even expect it. And when one person gets healed, they say, how are you sure? Are you sure they didn't pay this guy? They are these people. You see, because we do not even expect that there is an experience. When a student is in school, you do what we call practicals, correct? When they are teaching you are sleeping, they say, mix this with this, you are just yawning. But when you get to the lab, when you try it yourself, you just smile because that experience has crystallized in your mind. We have a powerless church because many believers do not have their knowledge of God backed up by an experience of the kingdom life. So we talk about the Holy Spirit without any experience of him. We talk about the concept of divine health. We talk about the concept of prosperity. We talk about the concept of the move of the spirit that God can transform a man, but there is no experience. Say after me, the kingdom of God it's not in words, but in power. Hallelujah. And the reason why the manifestation, the gospel of power is cast in certain Christian circles is because of the sacrifice. Listen to me. Because of the sacrifice it takes. Many people are unwilling to contend for more with God. And so whatever experience they've had of God, for many, it's just a salvation experience and a little of theological experience. And we camp around there. And the more we read theological books, we believe that our knowledge of theology is equivalent to the knowledge of God. And you see someone tells you, you have been a theologian for the past 10 years. There's nothing you will tell me in this Bible that I will not see. But you know that this guy is being influenced by the spirit of anger. He's telling you he knows everything in the Bible. One minute later, he just slaps you. And then he says, I, I, I do not even know. This guy needs, he needs help. Now he's telling you, I know everything. Hallelujah. And so we have many nice, wonderful messages. They give you the background. They give you every well-prepared sermon but with no power to change people. Not even salvation. And you hear a lot of preachers say now, with this message, if you know you are not born again, I pray that as you go back home, the Lord will help you to do something about this message. Can, can you imagine? This is supposed to be an experience. Imagine an evangelist come on the pulpit. Imagine Jake's for God's sake comes up and preaches, I mean with power, and says, Jesus, save them, he healed them, he delivered them. So now as I wrap up my message, I, I want to encourage everyone who came from far and near for this mega crusade to take seriously what I've said. I, I ask the Lord to strengthen you and uh, bring you to a point where you can see reason in what I've said. Now, hold on, hold on. You are talking to someone who just left his shrine. Are you following me now? This guy just left his shrine with a solid tangible experience and he came and met you making noise one PA one protocol here one protocol there and you stood and you were making noise and his native doctor calls him and said please come back just forget about these noisemakers hallelujah Christianity begun supernaturally with power, a woman without the aid of a man conceives. That's, a, that's an experience. Hallelujah. A man walks on water, defying certain laws. 
dies and brings himself back to life. The entire span of the Christian experience is rooted not just in word, but in power. The demonstration of power. Now please listen because I'm, I'm soon, oh you will enjoy this message tonight, believe me. Whenever I say power, many church folks, all you just think about is somebody falling down. Let's do it. Come. Two people. One usher, one somebody. Pastor Alpha, you are an usher. Come. Come, sir. Do you know how to fall down? Alright, just fall down. No, no, no. Hold on. You are getting it. Okay, are you ready? Now. Oh, yeah, fall down. This is what the church calls power. Shame on us. This is not what I'm calling power. So if you are thinking I'm talking of falling down, no, that's not, you are, you are in for a shocker. This is not power. For many people, this is just church jamboree. Because demons can do that. A powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom of God. Many of you are not here because of our nice messages. Something happened to somebody you know, you, you, you know and you said, Kai, no, I will come and find out. Even if it's not true. We had a gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim, remember him? Some of you. That guy slept in the grave three days to get the power of invincibility. Three days in the grave. Saw dead men wake up and come out of their graves. They told him to lie down there. You don't get up. You don't do anything. The spirit of the, of the man in the grave that he was lying, they said they wanted it to come upon him. After three days, this guy got up. He could look at a baby like my little sister that came and shared testimony here and shoot her. No conscience. That guy came for koinonia and sat down outside. So imagine if we just came. A beautiful suit. Say, Hallelujah, somebody. Now this guy slept in the grave. Three days. A Christian experience. Elijah said, look, we are talking too much. If God be God, let him be known. If Baal be God, let him be known. Let's go and meet upon the mountain and settle this case once and for all. He said, the God that answers by fire, that is God. Elijah was so confident. He asked the people, he said, shout, maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he went strolling. And then when it was his time, he said, set me 12 stones. Let me show you something. I didn't come to discuss jargons with you. Set me 12 stones. He said, pour water on it so that you won't say by some chemical analysis, something happened and so pour water on it. Hmm. The Bible says fire came from heaven, licked up the water. Burnt everything. And Elijah said, now that you know, none of you will survive. He said, follow them. And he slayed all of them. Hallelujah. The church was advanced. Because men. You think the disciples were intelligent people. They didn't go to any Bible school. Jesus sent them. He said go in my name. He said as you go. Go to the Lordship of Israel. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received. Freely give. The Bible says they came back rejoicing. Their first thing, he didn't say they clapped for me. I didn't know I could speak Greek like that. He said even the demons, that was their first testimony, were subject to us through thy name. Hallelujah. Many, we have all kinds of justifications because of the sacrifice it takes to contend for that dimension of God. So many people begin to give excuses. They say it's not my calling. Did you see Jesus sending the 70? What did he call them? He told all of them, as you go, do the same thing. Listen. The fact that there are caterers does not mean every woman should not know how to cook. Correct? There are people called into certain ministries. The gifts of healing. But it does not mean, well, don't you cook in your house? All of these things people give for lack of fire. We try to give all kinds of sugar-coated messages. Criticizing people who are moving in genuine power. Now, note, note, note genuine power because I have another well-prepared dimension. You should know me by now. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. We have been trained to contend with anything that is above and beyond our ordinary thing. How can a man just get healed? The lady shared a testimony now. How can an ovarian cyst disappear? Some of you are just saying, Jare, go and test with a real doctor. You see it? That's, that's a problem with a lot of people. You never were surprised how the growth formed from nowhere. But how it went down is what is surprising you. Someone will be sitting and his hand will start swelling. Nobody will ask from where the swelling came from. But when it goes down, we begin to complain. Someone had an ear. The ear starts eating up. You never say, is this not supernatural? But when no ear starts coming back, he said, like, like this one. At least Jesus, oh, we know. Malchus' ear, this is Jesus. So, the church has been trained to reject anything that comes with power. But it is in that demonstration of power that Satan is silenced. Moses was a stammerer. He said, oh God, and God was angry. He said, in God's mind, he's saying, you don't need too much of talking. You don't know the experience I'm giving you. Pharaoh does not need English or Hebrew. Pharaoh needs a demonstration. Ten signs, and Pharaoh let them go. Not jargons. Ten signs, demonstrations of solid power. And today in the church in Nigeria, Learn how to speak your English. Know how to add your vowels and put all the consonants together. May God increase and bless you. But let me tell you the truth. When it comes to real transformation, if you want to be part of what God is doing, you need more than that. Brother, demons don't hear English. There's one language they understand. The Bible says, through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves to you. Not through the greatness of your English. Through the greatness of your power. Hallelujah. When Moses went before, before Pharaoh, it was a contention of mantles, not mouth. They threw it on the mantle of the spirit and the mantle of witches. That was a contention. Are you listening to me? The gospel of power. Powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom. One of the reasons why many churches have complained when they see crowds like this, for instance, they say, are you sure? These people are just coming like that. That's the point. Read Mark 1, 2, 3. I don't have time. I have other things. This is still an introduction. There are other things I want to talk about. Listen. In every man, we have a community and a nation and a world. Humanity is always in need of solutions. Are you listening to me? Let me give you the secret of solid ministry. Humanity is always in need. This is why God sends us as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. For as long as there is power upon you to meet the needs of men, they will come from everywhere to hear the word of the Lord and to be blessed and transformed. A native doctor is in the bush. I, I, I spoke to a guy. I think I shared it with you, uh, Jakes. I, I spoke to a guy who came last week. This guy had gone to almost all the major shrines in this country. Someone took him there. Hallelujah. He went to the shrines. And they took him to some pastors and they couldn't do anything about it. Hallelujah. Couldn't do anything about it. Shame on the church for allowing Satan just to prevail. And we laugh over it. And we say, I'm not called into this area. It's not my calling. It's not this and that. Which one is your calling? What is your calling? To talk? Say, my own is just to counsel people. Don't you know that people act the way they act as a result of the influence of demons? Say amen. Amen. According to Mark 1, 2, and 3, the biblical strategy for publicity to bring unbelievers and to bring people is the miraculous. The biblical, I'll show you. Let's, let's go to the book of Mark quickly. Anywhere there is a true manifestation of the kingdom and the glory of God. Now, don't you say crowd does not matter. Crowd does not matter in that... Um, God judges from a higher perspective. But without the people, who will you touch? 
The ministry is not to sit. Are you listening to me? All through the life of Jesus till he went to heaven, he always had people around him that he could minister the word to. Mark. Mark 1. Sorry. Are you there? Verse 21. The first recorded miracle of Jesus. As soon as he was commissioned, without delay, he casted out devils. Without delay. Mark 1, 21. And they went into Capernaum. And straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in a certain, in the synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit. Are you, is that in your Bible? So who does Jesus confront in the synagogue? An unclean spirit. Question. The demons in him, why do they allow him to come to the synagogue? Didn't they know that Jesus was going to be there? Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? And so on and so forth. Verse 25, one to read. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Let's see the effect. 27. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? And what new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit. And they do obey him. 28. Please read it if it's in your Bible. And throughout the whole region of Galilee. Question. Who were those who took that news to the region of Galilee? It's in your Bible. One demonstration of the reality of the kingdom. Every time people are touched by God, they are too grateful to keep quiet. The gospel was not supposed to be a silent thing. There is an effect that the power of the Holy Ghost is supposed to do in you that will stop you from being quiet. That's how the gospel spread. In the days of God's generals, their newspapers were full of the exploits of the church. Correct? But right now, our exploit, our church is, is full. If you see a story about a pastor, is how he raped a lady, stole from a church, did something, or one, one saga somewhere happening. Or that they suddenly caught him, wanted to rob his oil, and then some one member caught him, and there's trouble. And in the evening, verse 32, I want you to help me. Maybe I'm the one who is not seeing it well. And in the evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and all those who were. For those of you who say, ah, whenever, the, I mean, the power of God comes and people, the, people are being delivered. They say, oh, there's no need for this. Go and read your Bible very well and tell me whether Jesus did not cast out devils. Hallelujah. Mm. Those who were possessed with demons. Verse 33 again, one to read. Look at this description. A city gathered at the door. At the door. At the door. Jesus just sat down quietly. And they were just bringing the sick. And the sick were going out. They saw one madman that had troubled people in the city. They said, come please, this way. The next thing, the guy came out saying, say, how are you? Good afternoon. Another man next, he entered and came out. These guys entered the city and people say, no, we have to come and see. Critics say, I will go. Women tied their day. Let's, see, let's go and see this thing. And the whole city, no posters, no mic, no, P, no PR department. Are you following me now? The biblical tool to attract people to see the works and the wonders of God. Is the manifestation of power. Hmm. Today there are evangelists in the world. Who do a lot of things and do not believe in the ministry of power. If an evangelist does not believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. He's not an evangelist. He should go and sit down. He should be a lecturer in a Bible school. Verse 34. And he healed many that were sick. Is that correct? Of diverse diseases. And did what? Cast out many demons. They were not small. 
and permitted not the demons to speak because they knew him. Hallelujah. Now, verse 37, he had to be running away from people. And when they had found him, they said unto him, what? All men seek for you. In other words, Jesus was hiding. The man said, you better hide. I have a serious problem. I will sit down and die. Let me tell you, if you offer real solution, people will travel from anywhere and come to receive. If you plant your church in a river, Habal is not living in a river. What takes people there? They drop their jeep and trek from here to like ABU gate. A dignified man. He said, I must get out of this problem. I'm tired. See, let me tell you, every time you criticize the power of the Holy Spirit, the genuine power of God, you are a wicked person. Because you do not know those who are touched and those who are blessed. You see everybody seated in Koinonia. You don't know how many people have gone through things. Whenever you see demons leaving people, you don't know the relief this brings. Hallelujah. I assure you, if you are not receiving anything, you would have been tired of coming here by now. It's not because you love me. That may be part of it, but there is a bigger reason. You know that God is in the midst of his people doing wonders. Hallelujah. Let's finish up. All men seek for thee. 38. And he said unto them, let us go into the next town that I may preach there also. For there, therefore came I forth. Are you ready now? Verse 39, I want to read. I want to show you the secret of real ministry that many pastors have not read. And I'll tell you why soon. 39. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and did what? There we see it again. There we see it again. He preached in their synagogues. It looks like the synagogue had a lot of demons. He casted out demons. Because the talkatives were speaking Greek. 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, If thou will, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Hallelujah. 43. Please read something. And he, and he strictly charged him, and forthwith he sent him away. And he said unto him, See that thou sayest nothing to a man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony. 45. Please read. One to read. In so much that Jesus could no longer enter openly into a city. Today, we have mechanisms of holding people by force. You don't come to our church again. Go back and read your Bible. Shame on the church for this nonsense we do all around. There are churches today that have ID cards to make sure their members don't go any other place. Insecure men of God moving here and there. They won't go and study the Bible and contend for true spiritual power. They just see you in one fellowship and they come. They say, me, what I'm giving you is not enough. Of course it's not enough. That's the only reason why they'll run around looking for real solution. So, so the prophecy I'm giving you didn't work. It didn't work. You are just too afraid to tell him. It didn't work. Because God didn't send him. He's not a prophet. Pressure made him to say what God didn't say. Hallelujah. There are, there are all kinds of membership jargons. Go to places like Abuja and see. A building like this is another church. One is another church. Their ushers are standing behind one another. If somebody's coming, they say, hello, how are you? God bless you. And immediately they finish. The pastor calls them and queries them. And say, when has the church of God become a marketing jargon? Shame on the church. We spend millions of God's money and newspapers come and see the man of power you are not a real man of power because when benihin is coming to nigeria all the newspapers beg for an audience what is wrong with you you are running where god has not sent you powerless christians who will not humble themselves and listen hallelujah 
The Bible says Jesus was begging and said, don't tell anybody. Let me tell you something. Have you had people complain and say, it's because our church is too far. For say our church is near, it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. All those things are just jargons. It's not true. Say, for say God gave me a land in Port Harcourt or Lagos. Bah, I would have been suffering. You will be surprised. You think people are idiots. You see, men of God are so used to deceiving people that they think people don't have brains again. Do you know what it means for someone to prepare from 4 o'clock and run and come and stand and say he's coming for koinonia? You really believe he's just coming because of certain men? And families, there are people here right now that came some from Abuja. There are people already calling me, coming from all over this country for the miracle service. You really believe that they like the way my face looks? Or they don't have anything to do with their lives? For the kingdom of God is not in the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power. John sent. He said, go and tell Jesus. Go and ask him. Are you the one to come? It was the same John that said that the one who sent me said upon the one whom I see a dove. He is the lamb. He's the one that said, behold the lamb. Now John was under pressure and he said, go and ask this guy. In other words, I expect a level of demonstration. Now I'm in the prison, I've not seen it. Is he the one? And the moment they spoke to Jesus, we'll read that later on. Jesus just looked at them and said, watch me. He healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, healed people and said, go and tell John what you have seen. In other words, what in your law should be the character of the Messiah? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 32 of chapter 3. Mark. Are you there? 32. And the multitude sat about him. There you see multitude again. Is that correct? And the multitude. Jump to verse 4. Number 1. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered to him a what? Great multitude. Are you seeing there again? The desert multitude. The mountain multitude. The seaside multitude. Everywhere multitude. Why? Because there was a manifestation of the kingdom. A manifestation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So why don't we have Christians coming for, to our faculties? Because you people are not praying for a demonstration of the kingdom. Now when I talk about a demonstration of the kingdom, I'll show you what I mean. A demonstration of the kingdom is not falling down. Many people have reduced the Christian experience. So that when you are saying in the name of Jesus, your days of captivity are over. Everybody's looking. Nobody fell down. They just say this word, Jerry. This guy should go and sit down. Hallelujah. Miracles draw the people and then Jesus saves them. The biblical tool for evangelism is the miraculous. Whenever there is an outpouring of miracles, an outpouring of signs, wonders, breakthrough, genuine breakthrough, that people come in and they receive the touch, the tangible hand of God, transformation in their lives their families their finances their health their understanding their passion for god then the kingdom has come hallelujah miracles are the tools that draw people to jesus and then the reality of the gospel reaches out to them the clearest manifestation of the glory of God is in miracles and signs and wonders. Not many people have had the opportunity to go to crusade grounds. Otherwise, if you go to a typical village crusade ground, you will appreciate the place of miracles. Because while you are interpreting, the people are sleeping. In their mind, they are waiting for something more than your talk. You say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the other person is saying, they are sleeping. They are not interested in your talk. 
while you are talking, it's only the women that will say, mm, and that's just because they have a heart for God. But when one crippled person lifts his crutch, every sleeper will wake up. Sleep will disappear one time. Hallelujah. When a, a known herbalist in that land comes in and you look at the man and cast out that devil and the man goes to sit down, let me tell you something. The next day, you will have to beg for a bigger venue. Reinhard Bonke was giving a biography of his ministry. He said God sent him to go to one African country and start a crusade. When he went there, he met a pastor with just a little congregation of maybe about a hundred people. And he said, God told me to go to the stadium. The pastor laughed at, at him and said, me, I have not gone to the stadium. I don't have that kind of grace. Reinhard Bonke prepared and brought all his team. They rented the stadium. And when he got in, he saw only the church members of that man. Imagine a stadium that can take about 50,000 people. And then you see just one little seat that is for dignitaries. With the members of the church, they are just singing. Renard Bonke said he was disappointed. Nobody knew him. Why? It's not that nobody knew him. Nobody had seen the demonstration of the kingdom through him. Because he said right there, he began to minister to them. And about five or seven people notably sick people were there he said by the next day the crowd had turned to about 5,000 people news news let me tell you something genuine news does not need GSM to spread genuine if it's genuine news you just hold on for instance if they say your accommodation is open this night ladies many of you even if you don't have phone you will hear that's how the miraculous can bring people to Jesus Christ Somebody will go out of his way to travel a distance and say, I have a story for you. God did something in the life of my mother. My father was divorced. He vowed that he would never come back home. But the prayers went on him and this guy cannot sleep again. He's calling my old mother, my uh, uh, sweetheart or my honey or my sugar. And your old mother say, hey, hey, hey. The demonstration of the kingdom. When two of them hold their hands and come to church, your unbelieving brothers will start thinking twice. Hallelujah. Say, I believe in miracles. Say it, I believe in miracles. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Your neighbor is involved in witchcraft and divination. And all kinds of things. And you pack in. And you do an introductory prayer session around the house. To highlight them. That one who carries true fire has come. And they receive the reverberation from their house. And then you go out and meet the man and say I'm your neighbor. And by the grace of God I've paid for two years. The man knows for sure that he's in trouble in that remaining two years. When people say, hey, this woman, they gossip about it. They say, this woman is a witch. I saw her. What are you doing about it? And you see believers so helpless. Your child is coughing. They say, I know. They want to make money with him. Hey, hey, hey. This is how this boy will die now. What you need is a gospel of power. That an ambassador steps into that place and says, what is going on here? And they say this woman wants to, they want to do this and that from the village. Work all kinds of witchcraft. You say, really? He say, oh, thank God we are here. It's a simple issue. Let the boy. See, the Bible says Jesus entered and saw Peter's mother-in-law sick with a fever. The Bible didn't say he prayed. He held and lifted. I said, go and serve us, Jerry. We are hungry. Power. Through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves. You just go to the realm of the spirit and find out how many demons and principalities work every week to make sure you don't get blessed here. And wonder, and then you wonder why we live as if Satan does not exist here. Because Jesus is alive. Hmm. Hallelujah. We travel around all the time. All the time. Many of you, where you want to travel, you don't talk. So let me not sin against God in case anything happens. Sorry, sir, you the last person sitting here. Mm, what 
kind of life is that? You look at the driver and see one guy with a drowsy eye. Say, me, let's ask, oh, is this guy well? Is this guy well? See, we need a church with genuine, authentic power. Hallelujah. The miraculous opens up the hearts of people to receive Christ. That's why after the miracle service, when we make altar calls, there are some brothers you see coming out, you know it's God that brought this one. The way the guy is even coming out, he's even surprised. What is bringing me out and he's still coming? You see him standing and wondering as if someone brought him out. Of course, it's the power. It's called anakazo, the compelling power of the spirit. Hallelujah. But the balance here is that you don't center your ministry around miracles. You center your ministry around Jesus. This is where my preaching of the balance starts. Because you see, the miraculous is not a teaching, it's a demonstration. You just teach it to help people comprehend. Hallelujah. So when your ministry is all about miracles, miracles are a tool. Are you listening to me? Hear me. If your demonstration of miracles does not lead men to Jesus Christ, God is not glorified in that activity that is going on. Please write it. If at the end of all your display of power and falling down and rolling and sweeping the carpet, people do not come to the genuine knowledge of Jesus Christ, you did not glorify God. I don't care how charismatic it was. So you don't center your ministry around Jesus, around miracles, but Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, if I, not if wheelchairs be lifted up, not if crutches be lifted up, not if tumors be lifted up, not if dead people be lifted up, if I, Jesus, the son of the living God, be lifted up, I will draw all men. So miracles are tools. Are you listening to me? They are tools that bring people to Jesus Christ if they do not come to the practical saving knowledge of Jesus Christ then something was wrong hallelujah but now we see that there is what an error in the church still among the charismatics that an emphasis has switched away from who Jesus Christ I want to ask you a question. How many times have you heard preachers mention the name of Jesus in many pulpits? For many people, it was last year. And they preached four times into the new year. They raised offering. They talked about vow. They talked about first food. Prophet's offering. But they did not mention the name Jesus. Hallelujah. They played documentaries for hours about the man they just saw slow motion he stands and heals the sick and does every kind of thing he wants to do and then he does everything and at the end of it nobody says anything about jesus and people share the man and he's so happy jesus is absent hallelujah jesus must become the center of our ministry not apostles, not prophets, not miracles, not money, not wisdom. But Jesus. Say Jesus is the center of my life. And everything that I do. Say Jesus is the center in Koinonia. Yes. May God forbid the day that we we'll forget about Jesus. And start marketing ourselves. And marketing power. I'm marketing Joshua Selman. I'm marketing all kinds of things. May God forbid that day. Where Jesus will stop becoming our focus. Either because of the levels of grace that he has brought us. And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men by myself. The reward for lifting him up is that he grants the miracles that bring the people to him. Because he said, I will draw. Hallelujah. 
There are so many people in the church right now. Now listen. Because of this pressure of miracles, miracles. Right now, listen. There are so many people under pressure. It takes a while, write it, for the miraculous to begin to manifest in your life. It takes the dealings of God. It takes the pruning of God. You must be proven genuinely. I'm telling you, if you want to walk in authentic power, authentic power responds to a, a, a dealing with God. Many of you see men of God who are anointed. Hear their stories and their sacrifices first. And then you will know why God has rewarded them. If I begin to tell some of you the sacrifices and the things that are done in the secret for the power that you see. Forget about the suit. Don't be deceived by it. Behind every glory, there is a story. Are you listening to me? I'm talking of authentic Christian power. But right now, there are many men of God. They don't talk about Jesus. They have no regard for the word. But there are terrible manifestations of miracles in their churches. Something is wrong. Say after me, something is wrong. And this is what I'll be rounding up with. We'll stop wherever we can stop. It's a series. I don't want to rush it. I want to take it in depth so that you get it. Hallelujah. As a result of the craze, knowing now that the miraculous brings members and for many pastors, more members means more what? More money. Thank you. So you know. More members mean more money. More honor. More prestige. When you stand in the midst of other pastors, say you have many members that hey, small boy, why can I sit with you? How many? 5,000. I say, hey, we can sit now. I'm trusting God for expansion. And you hear men of God sit down. How many members do you have? How many members? And then the other one who has only 30 gets intimidated. And the guy says, you'll see. Three months later, the guy is breaking. He says, he caught one principal. Oh God, tell us. Tell us what principle did you get? Hallelujah. The tragedy of witchcraft in the church let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I will not hide it from you. I love you too much to lie to you. Many men of God, you see, manifesting what they call power have gotten these things from demons and devils and witches. Right now, there are all kinds of... Any man, whether prophet or not, if you cannot see, if you cannot hear, sorry for you. And the Bible says there are people with itching ears and they love it so. Right now, when people come in for meeting and they see the man of God say, let's go straight to the word. They say, ah, no falling down, no nothing. Uh, oh God, let's go. You just go this way. I'll come out. We'll meet later and disappear from this place. Say, what kind of boring man is this? And so you put pressure on the men of God. Although they are still walking with God. See, let me tell you something. There are three kinds of men. There are three kinds of error in the body of Christ that God must resolve. Especially for a lot of people who want to just jump into ministry. Hold on and listen to me first. Number one, we have witches and wizards in the church. Direct occultists. They have sold their souls to the devil. God didn't call them. They are agents of darkness. They came from the pit of hell. That's category one. Their job is to come and mislead a lot of people. They are occultists. Are you listening to me? different men of God I'm telling you they have mixed their wine with water I read an article verified article you read it junk fire yesterday about a woman in Port Harcourt who empowers most of the men of God in Abuja including a popular bishop now I don't just read junks and come and talk to you are you listening to me I have common sense I know that this message will go as far as can go so if I talk to you these things are verified Hallelujah. Thank God for this message. Great men of God. It's a, it's a cult. It's a movement. Registration fee is 100,000, first and foremost. And which is easy when they collect your offering for two weeks. Is that not enough? Don't pity them. It's your offering that, that went there. After that, what happens? The Bible, I said the Bible, um, the article praise God the article says that they now commit all kinds of immoral acts with that woman shameful immoral acts that should not even be mentioned 
and then after that there are different kinds of oil and according to this is somebody that was going to be initiated and had to draw back the most popular oil right now is called seeing oil they wash your eyes with it and you just look you can see everything hallelujah everything that's why you see every man just looks you are this you who just got married and he moves in dramatic accuracy because with that in two weeks he can triple the membership because the truth is people have needs are you listening to me people have genuine needs when they see real solutions they will go they will go they have genuine needs and this man is receiving money of course if somebody wants to spend 10 million on his health and you got him healed ah can't he take half of it and say pastor i would have gone to india now you have helped me let me reduce your board in the ministry if if you one day you can make five million is that not a lucrative business answer me and then he buys another one rub it on his eyes these men sleep with women and do all kinds of things minutes to their their ministration to maintain some of these powers please listen to me hallelujah then the next one they call it do as i say aren't you amazed at how daft the members of many churches are anything they ask them to do the newspaper one time recorded how that some people members went to church naked remember the article some people don't read newspaper hallelujah members imagine a father and a mother say are you ready now kids let's go that's what happened madness in the body of christ they enter the church naked no see when i say naked i'm not talking of jesus of nazareth kind of naked naked can you imagine everybody in koinonia here naked what is wrong with us yes but that's what happened that cannot be normal the spirit of god is not an idiot we have misrepresented the holy spirit to the to the world god is not god is not a daft person please let's not make jesus christ look like a stupid person hallelujah and when you get that kind of oil you can do anything to anybody that's why you can see a man who buy his house they just cut the scissors of the house next week is the pastor that packed inside brother what happened they say seed now i'm not saying there's nothing wrong when when you see genuine things you celebrate them manipulation and witchcraft i was told of a man of god that saw a beautiful plot of land belonging to one of his members the guy just pressed hey hi. and the lady said what is wrong now he said you will die now and she called her brother in uk he said let's give this man the land though they gave the guy land he erected a structure quick on it now they are they are in the court the land is worth 80 million the man manipulated them into sowing it to him what if that man were your father you will not enjoy for years Kenna, because one man of god has come to manipulate your your the death the financial destiny of the family are you listening to me and then the next oil is specifically for ladies hallelujah according to the article they say it's called touch and follow i have been amazed at the the vulnerability of many ladies to men of god it looks like they don't men don't have wombs they don't get pregnant so a lady who knows that she can be vulnerable you see a man of god just looks at her they come for conferences and welfare the ladies that serve them after serving me water like this you just look at her and write as if god spoke later they come to meet you in the hotel room man of god your message was powerful the next thing that lady won't come out of that hotel room again what, what kind of nonsense is going on in, in the church i was speaking with jake the other day i said i don't know how people reason aside from the fear of god 
I was discussing with Jake. I said, what if I tell you now, let me sleep with you and you run away and say it's not good. Hey, you can imagine. This is what I think about. Oh. I don't know how the men of God talk to the ladies. I was telling Jake. I said, Jake, now imagine I tell this girl I want to sleep with you and the lady say, ha, you've preached this against us and you ran away. Your, your prayer now will be like nobody know. It's not, you don't want to sleep again. This is how I'm thinking. It is my simple thought. It may not be your own. It's my own. In one day, hear me, in one day, that which you have labored for years to build will crash in one day. The Bible says, how are the mighty fallen? That's why the Bible taught about the strange woman. It said, she has cast down many. Yea, many mighty men have been wounded by her. So for those of you who cannot see anything that passing scared, you are already smiling and warming up that you want to do ministry, you better go and close up yourself and flog it out with destiny. Otherwise, you will receive a root shock. Hallelujah. You see a lady, tell her to come and spend weekend in your house. You say you are, you are prayer partners. What, what is partner? What is prayer partner? Stop it. Stop it. If you are doing it, stop it. I'm not joking. See, this is what kills grace. So you see a man who is fiery. Tomorrow you won't hear anything about him again. I'm not saying don't be nice, don't relate. We relate with people. But that you must take an oath before God and say, Oh Lord, my God, by your mercies, would you help me? It's not by the strength of a man. But let me tell you something. There must be a determination. All the guys stand up. Stand up. Say in the name of Jesus. Please lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to walk in true holiness. And walk in the authentic power of God. In the name of Jesus. I make up my mind. Not to defile myself. By the grace of God. And the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive grace. To say no. To sin. To say no. To anything that will eat up my destiny. I have a glorious destiny. I have nations to conquer. And no Delilah will tear my destiny down. God bless you. Please sit down. Ladies stand up. This is Koinonia. Stand up, please. We are, we are not joking here. This is a training camp. Inside and outside, stand up. We need to take this thing seriously. Many of you, when you hear this thing said, you just laugh. You don't know the severity of Satan eating up a man's destiny in one day. Lift up your hands, ladies. And say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace and power above and against immorality say in the name of jesus no man no pastor no prophet no apostle would deceive me and mislead me to abort my destiny in the name of jesus i receive grace i receive strength to run with the spirit of elijah away from every appearance of evil I receive wisdom i receive courage and i receive power god bless you be seated and celebrate jesus in this place let's know that there can be real christians in the body of christ for once let's trust the power that comes upon the altar that is not every anointing that is polluted there must be something in your life that distinguishes that you are a genuine child of god there must be something. The gospel of power. Many of these men, the women in their churches don't rest. You see all the sisters, they are always looking down when he's preaching because they are surprised at what he's saying. He has already booked the lady he will sleep with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now the guy is standing and speaking and the lady is wondering. I know many people won't like me but i will say it you know me we will say it koinonia is where you hear it as it is 
Hallelujah. So there are all kinds of anointings. Because people have been pressured. All kinds of anointing. There is the one for pulling crowd. Pulling crowd. You rub it on your chairs. You rub it everywhere. Members come and sit down and they cannot understand themselves again. You see people fighting at home. You must come to our church. You must come to our church. Our pastor must do this. Shut up! Is it only your church that God is there? Give people peace. Let the Holy Spirit bring them, not your disturbance. There are many of you now. Some people are angry with you because you didn't come to their church. What kind of nonsense is this? Some of you are even angry at some others because they didn't come for koinonia. Say you will see. Just pray. If God cannot bring them, you won't bring them. Say you won't come and see our pastor. Abi. You are the ones that make them think we are fake. Hallelujah. It's a year of supernatural exploit. So God is cleaning the house now. Hallelujah. So that when you see, I'm not teaching you to be judgmental. I'm just telling you the truth. Hallelujah. These men don't preach Christ. They don't love God. They have no respect for altar calls. But you see a manifestation of fearful miracles. Brother, something is wrong. I can tell you that. These men have convincing and enticing power. And so it's difficult for you to discern. Hallelujah. Say no man will deceive me. I'm not saying any man you just see fall down in. You, you go for one program and somebody falls down. No, they must not behave like me. People have their behaviors. Are you listening to me? You can meet a man who preaches and say, oh, when God says, go, you move. And he says, it's fake. He's not fake. It's just differences in personality. Are you listening to me? A man can preach and jump on this pulpit and sit down and say, this guy is fake. He may not be fake. Oh. So don't you just think, you are now start thinking, ah, I went to one program yesterday. That man must be fake. No. You must not have a man that is as serious as me to show that he's serious with God. No. Hallelujah. But there, there is always grace because some of you will be walking in the past. So that's the second category of people. Innocent men who got to mix their wine. The third category, please listen. And this is even the most dangerous. The third category are very innocent people. Listen to me. Because of the innocence, the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man, lest he be the partakers of their sins. Hallelujah. There are many people that come. Many of you like it. You like laying of hands. Anybody you just you say, oh sir, the oil on your life. And you receive what you cannot explain now. From the day they laid hands on you, a realm was opened up to you. You know this is not the Holy Spirit that opened that realm. So these are the innocent people. Hallelujah. They are innocent. They are naive. But they are entering experiences already that their genuine Christian experience is not supposed to give. And they are moving in dimensions that are faulty. They do not even know. Hallelujah. There are many people with that kind of thing. Praise God. There was a time Ben Hinn's brother, a man came, a proper homosexual, He's a minister too. Proper homosexual. Not, not one who is struggling with something. I'm not talking of those who are struggling with habits and God is helping them. Are you listening to me? The difference is there are people who are struggling with things. Alright? But you see their heart is always open for God to help them. There are others who the Bible says their heart has been seared with hot iron. They have come to a point where they are non-repentant. That's the kind. And he came and he was going to lay his hand on Ben Hinn's brother. And Ben Hinn's brother just looked and saw his spirit together with the man's hand. He held his hand. He said, no way. Not on my head. See, have you not seen that there are certain people, the moment some hands are laid on them, they carry on some attitude and characteristic. Suddenly, the, they laid hands on you and you cannot see women and leave them in peace again. They laid hands on you and you start desiring men. Your roommate has packed out. They left only you in the room. Come for miracle service. Something is wrong. Break your pride. I don't care what fellowship or what church you are leading. And come. You see, and another thing is, men of God are not open to admit 
that there are challenges like this. I'm fine, glory. No, you are not fine. You need help. You need help. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Could it be that there are some of you seated here innocently who became victims of some of these people? The spirit of Christ, when imparted upon you, will bring a true life of holiness and righteousness. We love Jesus and all your demonstration of power and everything will be more of him and less of you. So could it be that some of you traveled to Port Harcourt, Abuja, or one man of God came from Ghana, one prophet. The day he laid hands on you, he just scattered your destiny into two. The Lord brings deliverance tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This thing has happened to some of our families. Are, you not, are there not some prophets that came to your house? From that day, your father cannot become himself again. Your mother cannot become herself again. The, you will carry your money like this. They obey your father. He, your mother does not even know. He's going to go and meet the prophet. In, uh, are some of your families not suffering it? Say yes. Because it's not a lie. They brought one candle. They brought one prophetic oil for them to buy. Your father will beat you and slap you and say you must rob that oil. Oh. You must rob it. They said something is wrong. The next thing he had three cars. Now it's only one. Where did two go? The prophet will drive it and enter your house. And say how are you doing? Is well. He knows when to discern when they pay your father. And he just comes. Your mother is tired of him. He comes. He says sorry. I don't like salt in my own fish. Your father says oh yeah 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 yeah. Go and make new fish for the man of God. They come into families and wreck that families. I assure you, they are devilish. I don't care who. Because the true spirit of Christ. The Bible says he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Not breaking apart. So on one side, we need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. As a demonstration of the kingdom. But then we must be careful. Lest our entire attention be upon miracles. And then we allow pressure. That's why I told you that the authentic power of God comes with a process. We are talking with John Fire yesterday and I told him, I said, see, the way the church is, listen to me. I read my Bible. Oh. Do you know there are many churches right now, because of the way the church is, there is even no need to read your Bible. Because they don't even give any respect for the Bible. The members don't read Bibles. I follow me now nothing happens and then we have the generation of ipads you can buy your ipad but carry a hard copy bible and come for koinonia with it hard copied bible because very soon now you stop coming with ipads you come with phone alone very soon you just put two tracks on your pocket and the next thing you're on your way to hellfire Technology should not make us idiots. Carry your Bible and come to church. I know you will criticize me, but I will say it. If your pastor uses iPad, please don't criticize him. Are you listening to me? There are great men of God, Pastor Chris, Christ Embassy, um, House on the Rock, different men of God. My friend, Pastor Pete Rock. And there's nothing wrong. Buy your iPad. But I'm saying when you get the madness that you cannot study the word, you cannot do anything. Carry your Bible, carry a good notebook. You don't carry your iPad to class. You carry an exercise book. As your teacher is writing, you write. That's how you become a good student. Carry iPad and see how many courses you carry over. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Next week, I'll consider what the Bible calls the doctrine of Balaam. We are going to consider it next week. And you will see how that Balaam was a real prophet. But something happened on the way. To the point that the Bible detests three times. The Bible talks about the way of Balaam. It talks of the error of Balaam. It talks of the doctrine of Balaam. From a, an error, it became a way. It became a doctrine. We'll examine it. How that Balaam was called by Balak, the king of Ammon, to go and curse the nation of Israel. And God told him no. But they send royal people with money. And the guy said, hey, oh, you should sleep first. Let me talk to God again. 
and you will see that this attitude of men of God has been in the Bible. And the Bible warns in Revelation to the church in Pagamos. It says, the doctrine of Balaam. You know what Balaam did? I'll share it with you next week. Balaam made the, the Moabites, Moabite women, to be meandering around the boundary of the Israelites. And the men looked at them and began to sleep with them. And they brought a curse upon themselves. Balaam said, I can't curse them, but I can advise you, Balak, to tell them to do something that will make them curse themselves. And you will see the prototype of what many prophets are carrying in Nigeria. It's in the Bible. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Just warm yourself for two minutes in the spirit. Inside and outside. Just warm yourself in the spirit. The word of God building us, making us strong, giving us wisdom. Say, Lord, I open myself to the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, move through me. Let me become a manifestation of the glory. In miracles, in signs, in wonders. Pray. Say, Lord, I open up myself to heal the sick, to cast out devils, that there be a demonstration of the Spirit through my life. Pray. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, and He has anointed you. To preach glad tidings to the poor. To set the captives free. To deliver the oppressed. To raise the banner of authentic power. Genuine power. The power of the Holy Ghost. Say Lord, walk through me. Do impossible things through my life. Lift your hands. And say these hands are blessed. Say these hands heal the sick. These hands will liberate nations. These hands will liberate families. Lift your hands to the heavens. Say Lord these hands will open up the gates of nations. These hands will bring the power of God to bear. These hands will enthrone Christ. Say Lord move through these hands. Move through this body. Rededicate your body as an instrument for the glory. Rededicate your body. Say, Lord, move through my body. Every fiber of my cell, a superconductor of power. I open the gates of healing, the gates of breakthrough, the gates of prosperity. Pray in the name of Jesus. Say the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm not ordinary. I'm a walking wonder. I have the name of Jesus. I go in that name. I do exploits. It's a year of supernatural exploits. Lord, I do exploits. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Now you are going to pray and say, Lord, put your power upon my lips. That when I speak to sinners, or the sick, or the oppressed, let a two-edged sword. The Bible says he was upon the horse, and out of his mouth proceeded. He said, I have given you the tongue of the learned. Pray. Say, Lord, anoint my lips. Let me release the fire, the power. Of the Holy Ghost as I bless bless the man as I prophesy let there be a performance as I speak the word of faith the word of healing the word of comfort make sure you are praying 
in the name of Jesus hallelujah one last prayer point and we're out of here I like you to pray we're going to lift up all the men of God that are being derailed are you listening to me in a vain quest for power some of them are your pastors if you love them lift your voice pray for the church of God they may not be your church members we don't believe in just denomination and membership but the church of the Lord Jesus Christ lift your voice and pray help the pastors in Abuja help the pastors in Lagos help the prophets in Port Alcott. oh God we pray deliver them from witchcraft deliver them from error pray for your pastor you know he loves God you know she loves God they are just being derailed say my God according to your mercy bring them back that they will denounce the hidden works of unrighteousness pray for them don't condemn them don't condemn them they love the Lord they are just being misled pray for them mercy oh God mercy we pray for the church in Zaria our territory our Jerusalem we pray let there be authentic power upon our pulpit oh God let God's people not be deceived anymore through dreams angelic encounters reveal yourself to these men oh God that they may repent and turn away from every work of unrighteousness hallelujah let me just add one more prayer point sorry I know we are out of time there are free buses you are going to pray for yourself that you will not start now see let me tell you something listen many of you have not experienced fame hear me many of you do not know what honor looks like you don't know what it means to walk and become the subject of discussion job said when i walk the elders bowed their head when they saw me the young men talked about me when my rose was with butter there is a way god will honor you that if you are not careful you can shift away lift your voice and cry say lord help me help me oh god lift your voice and cry there are many of you you've not even seen anything in your campuses your little fellowships you're already bragging and making noise say lord help me tonight in koinonia that jesus alone will be lifted not e and i not koinonia not your pastor's name not your ministry if i be lifted Lord, grant me a humble heart. Take away pride. Take away vain glory. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to start a wrong movement. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So evangelize like never before. Run away from pride. Run away from it. Let believers know you are genuine. Let believers know you are real. The things you used to do, you can't do them again. Your Christian experience must translate into something that the world can relate with. Hallelujah. I bless you with a deeper hunger for God. A deeper passion. Beyond your present experience. In the name of Jesus, let it be a well that no water can fill up. Let that hunger be a well that no water can fill up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You must make a commitment to win souls. Hallelujah. I will put that soul winning spirit in all of us. I know that, see, 
we must take evangelism serious evangelism has gone out of the church of christ many things is here now money fame apostle god will give you those things but we must restore the passion when somebody comes to give testimony and they talk about born again nobody says anything they talk about a changed life people trivialize it but if you say you bought a new car people stand up i'd like you to pray in one minute i know we're out of time say lord if your heart beat his souls i repent for trivializing it lift your voice and pray my god i pray that that fire for missions and evangelism will fall upon your people let koinonia be known as a place of radical power evangelism there are hundred level students scattered save them i deliver you from fear the fear of men i deliver you from it you will never walk in power until you have a heart for soul someone saved you someone preached to you you must take the banner of soul winning hallelujah hallelujah if souls do not come to the kingdom let me tell you we are joking are you hearing me if souls do not come to the kingdom we can do our jamboree but i tell you we have no notice in heaven thank god for the cars thank god for the anointing thank god for falling down but how many people can say i came to know the lord jesus how many drunkards can you bring to koinonia that someone will say i was a drunkard you know your classmates some of them are not born again you are you are not doing anything about it you are there bragging that you are walking in power you will never see miracles until you truly need souls if you are not ready for soul winning you don't need the miraculous whether you are a singer whatever you are you must make up your mind to begin to talk to people about the Lord Jesus what if they get angry with me Jesus hung naked on the cross what will you not give up for him the programs on campus listen to me I know there are many campus presidents make sure your programs this session are evangelistic in nature we are tired of jamborees around make sure whatever it is that you do let there be an ardent passion for souls you must give people an opportunity to be born again say i'm a soul winner don't just get them born again and throw them follow them up help them to be strengthened that way you can know you are doing ministry not when you have pa and pa and this and you have Thank you, Jesus. We are ready to walk in authentic power. We don't want to miss out on the kingdom just doing stories here on earth. We want to be relevant to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. When someone loses 10 million naira and comes to you and says, I'm about to die. I don't know whether I'm alive or not, but the last time they told me I was dying, help me at that point that's not the time to start teaching him and say okay be patient this is you can teach him financial principles but he needs that raven that fed elijah to come to him quick let the raven feed him first when someone tells you my life is not moving forward all doors are closed and because of that my father is about to leave my mother they have concluded that the divorce will happen in the month of May. That's not the time to settle down and start saying, oh, this and that, line upon line. They are, they are, a, a family is about to be torn apart. Oh, how we need the power of God in this generation. We need the power of God more than falling down. We need the power of God more than the jargons and the stories that we talk. Let me tell you, in the final analysis, 
it is his divine power that is the giver and if that power is not resident within you to the degree that it takes to provide supernatural solutions then you will continue to see people frustrated if you're a man of god and you came here listen to me you are not a blessing when you are not anointed let me repeat myself you are not a blessing when you are not anointed you may be a good person you may be a sincere person it takes more than sincerity to be a blessing the messianic prophecy isaiah chapter 61 please give it to us isaiah chapter 61 the spirit of the lord is upon me and then it says because the lord hath anointed me the lord had done what please talk to me koinonia the lord had anointed me so the factor there is the anointing and then it begins to list all the possibilities that can now happen on account of the anointing it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings to the meek it takes the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty it doesn't take a mouth to proclaim liberty it takes the anointing you can have the mouth and say be free but it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives it takes the anointing to open up prison doors next verse it takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and then the year of vengeance of our God. Look up please. It takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn. Verse 3. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion. So even in Zion there are those who mourn. It didn't say to appoint to them that mourn outside Zion. They are in Zion, yet they are mourning. To give them beauty. Look at what the anointing can do. Hi. The anointing, please listen, listen, families, listen. The anointing can give a man beauty. 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 For ashes. Many families know what ashes looks like. When a family has 10 people and no one is employed, when a family has 10 people and the highest earner in that family earns 2,000 per month, ashes. But the Bible says by the anointing, you can give men beauty. Beauty. You came for koinonia with ashes and God says, keep your ashes here. Take beauty. As you are sharing the grace, you are walking out with it. And then you continue to see your life. You know you have carried beauty by the results that follow. It says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. Then it says, the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine. And then the fruitful vine counted for a forest. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And then it says that they might be called the trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. God is still beautifying the lives of people. My brothers and my sisters, don't get used to your situation. I know you've trusted God in spite of it. But God wants you to now continue trusting him without it. It's, it's honorable and it is noble to trust God in spite of it. But what if he takes the pain away? What if he takes the situation away? What if he takes the predicament away? It takes a wicked man of God to watch what is going on in this country. And to watch what is going on in the times that we live in. And act as if nothing is happening to people. There are real problems. Poverty is a real problem. Young people now have high blood pressure because after spending 10 years for a four-year course and graduating with a 2-1, you are roaming around the street like an arm robber with your certificate that seems to have no value. Look at the, you know, we, we've, we've been talking about, I don't know if it's happening only in Zaria, but we've been talking about the increased rate of suicide, especially among young people. 
when you sit down and try everything and it does not work you just tell yourself i'm better off dead and you at least my money cannot rent a house but it can buy a rope what can it buy a rope and the spirit of death will help you to buy a rope and you find a tree and hang yourself and you who should have been a blessing to a family has now died and then people come to church with that kind of pain and a man of God says don't worry it's not all about your needs it's about Jesus I agree it's about Jesus but man was not designed to bend that law indefinitely there has to be an opportunity given when the Spirit of the Lord will step into the lives of people. I will never, never watch people go through things that the power of God can change and act as if nothing can be done about it. No, sir. Whoever told you that the power of God cannot do anything about the demons that oppress families? Whoever told you that the yokes of darkness can remain unhindered? I know you have prayed. I know you have fasted. But I've told you why it did not happen. It takes a level of grace. Whoever told you favor has stopped working. Don't generalize pain. There are men who have found Goshen. A place of safety. There are men who have found Bethel. There are men whose lives are like Beulah and Hephzibah. The planting of the Lord. When God plants a garden, will it not grow? He says the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. This is the place of encounter. I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your convictions. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life will change. Do to me what you want. Listen. When the Lord turn again the captivity of your family when the Lord turn again the captivity of your destiny it says we were like them that dream how beautiful is it to see the other side of pain how beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God how beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace Lord I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man, how beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still lifts men. I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir, including time including time i believe that when men lose things they can get it back i believe god can anoint ordinary men men who are just available but the level of grace is not there but i know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of god everywhere is not the same no god is everywhere but he does not manifest his power everywhere i believe in the power of god I was sent not only to reveal his face, 
but to reveal his power to let men know that he's still alive to correct misunderstandings about God please listen to me I want to charge your faith before we pray I believe that challenges can end I believe that problems can end did you hear what I said I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God. I believe it. I believe it. I believe prosperity is real. I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian. I believe in the blessing of the Lord. I believe in what it can do to your family. I believe in what it can do to your children. I believe in what it can do to your health. I know poverty causes sickness. I know it causes worry. Nobody will preach into embracing nonsense. No. I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers. I believe in speed. I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month i truly believe it i truly believe it i believe god can restore time when a woman has been barren for seven years if she gives birth to one baby we thank god but it's not a statement enough when she gives birth to triplets God took nine years of space in three, three years and compressed it in one year. Now, that's victory over time. The hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God. Please listen, let me tell you. We are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus. Wealth is a weapon. The anointing is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Mercy is a weapon. Wisdom is a weapon. What are you fighting with? Desire, you will not win. It takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I believe a man can weary the devil to a point where he will let you go. I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially, spiritually. I believe it. Listen, out of everything I'm saying, throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe. I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort when your children's school fees are paid you will serve God better don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter yes I know that none of these things should affect our love for God but let me tell you the truth there is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God it takes time to know God it takes time to serve God and that's the time the devil does not want to give you. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to, to be lifted. Vain is the help of man. People of God, please hear me. God did not gather us tonight to waste our time. He gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week your entire resources when you are finally broke then the person will die is that sickness
why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house is that a testimony a prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true please hear me especially for our precious visitors don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life we are talking God here not a doctor not a consultant not an architect not a monarch the God of the universe you may not be sick in your body but who told you he cannot change your life do you not know he's called the father of spirits that God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you that God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with you and you turn back and on Sunday you climb your pulpit as usual and suddenly fire a new dimension of grace do you believe in what I'm sharing if you being evil know how to give good gifts let me tell you you can hold on to the hands of God and say it was never about your hands it was about your heart but tonight I need your hands too in addition to your heart step in over my life step in please don't give up on God wake up don't give up on God don't come here hoping I've waited waited the God of heaven can compress time if you don't believe all this there's no point being here tonight because we are going to pray and you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody I came to mean business with my destiny listen when we begin to pray I like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night no matter what it is some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again because of your pain you've stopped writing some things you just concluded that God this one just just leave this issue no when it was time to resurrect Lazarus he said roll away the stone roll away the stone proof that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone two things men did they rolled away the stone and they lose the man what if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed your destiny must open up tonight it's not a blessing for people to doubt the Bible says to be diligent in these things to prove your calling and election to make it sure there are things that must be in your life to validate your call and your election if you're a man of God here yeah, trust God for grace for God's sake just go and stand before people and just open a scripture and speak and close it and say let's pray no that's what the scribes did all the time but Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy and he said today this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes they thought they would share the grace he closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand he said stretch your hands these things I write to you O excellent Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do and teach not teach alone do and teach can we pray please find a serious neighbor and I like you to pray from the depth of your heart the gift is only given to them that ask God cannot assume you desire it please lift your voice in one minute
and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Elam shalawa kasala kaparatus. Ebra kato sekede kaparianda kapariasha. Pray. Pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business, upon my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point, and the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me, please, if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, oh God. Pray. Do to me, oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tears. You call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. Do to me, oh God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Please look up. I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place. Because you see, let me tell you, every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season. And if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season, you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anointing, if it's not there, it's not there, period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I'll stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It is said, I must walk the walks of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. It says, for the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed. That vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life. That will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life are we together please lift your hands and let me pray i believe in the grace for speed i have seen a measure of that grace and i know it is true that god can shift a man I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works let me just tell you the anointing works you will see people begin to run it's it's not anything superstitious it is just the character and the operation of that anointing we need it the Lord put it in my heart we need it for our businesses ministries and so on and so forth Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I declare right now at the count of three, let this grace for speed 
that you have provided even for this season let it rest on people now i release that grace take that grace now please bring them out take that grace now inside outside everywhere i activate the operation of this grace i shift your life in the name of jesus to strength dimensions in the spirit receive the grace for speed receive the grace for kabakatalika parousia receive that grace for speed in the name of jesus and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab to Israel. i command speed 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 bring them out speed Keleba, help that woman please my god I'm still praying in the name of Jesus it says ye have encompassed this mountain for too long turn ye not what I prophesy again like 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 fire from heaven let that grace for speed mantle a family now not just an individual let it come upon families families receive speed i shift you i shift you in the spirit new level speed speed bring them out speed you will never be the same never be the same i'm not praying for individuals now i'm praying for families any family stagnated here i stand by the power of the holy ghost and i prophesy speed inside and outside i release speed right now now the lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing chains on people's legs chains and the lord is saying the lord is bringing deliverance now i'm seeing chains if you are under this category as i'm praying now the fire of god i'm seeing fire moving but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare. Is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, be free now. I want to pray God I'm telling you I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it chains you see let me tell you this look up look up the Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the Spirit of the Lord is one of it is Liberty do you know what Liberty is It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life there is such a thing in the dealings of God with men has given men liberty I want to pray there will be a mighty deliverance right now many of you this is what has plagued your life if it is true that victory was wrought on the cross then it's time to establish it now please listen to me just follow with the instructions be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony are we together now He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, I mean, among the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. Right there.
I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night but except God is not God you must be free right now in the name that is above all names I pray for individuals and families alike it is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness that have held men bound but in the name of Jesus everywhere here overflow one two three outside as you shout that name that is above all names I decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of God in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout Jesus I command forces and yoke. Go now. Go now. Release destiny. Release destiny. Elabarakatoshe pekeretos. Heliabratos keperekatos. Every ordinance that is not the planting of God, let it go now. Let it go now. I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go now. Palabaruza siana kata brande gele parushia. Prokotus kalabando shalakria sibahashia. Ingredo sasika parus kalabrandi kata. I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and i know that this is is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride the church and i'm seeing the bible says he will wipe away every tear i don't know what family and what person came here crying but the bible says to comfort they that mourn i declare by the power of the holy spirit let an anointing come upon your life now that terminates everything that brings tears that terminates everything that brings tears. Bring them out. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh eh Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say My friend lift your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus please listen I, I know that we don't have time but please I want you to every time the Lord shows me this then I know that he wants me to move around I begin to see lights a similitude of angels by my left and right and is is a very is a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people when this begins to happen all I need to do is you don't have to touch me just move around your road listen to me except God is not God as he has anointed as i pass your role if there is anything that is not of god it must let you go are we together now 
so please you pray the moment we do that then we'll begin to minister to the sick these things are signs and wonders they are supernatural they are supernatural even by the spirit thank you Jesus please I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as I pass the Lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you Jesus that everything that is not of God must give way in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of Jesus Madam be free I take it out of your life now the hand of God is upon you in the name of Jesus Christ receive the Lord is touching you I'm seeing God's taking something out of someone's stomach here it's going now now I release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of Jesus be free now I'm seeing fire rising from this row just from I don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this row right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please, all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now, I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now. 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 
Now! Now! Keep praying, lift your voice. Overflow one, keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. I take it out of you right now. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Right here where I'm standing. Right here where I'm standing. The Lord is taking something out of your life. Be free. I'm standing here and the Lord is saying it is over. He's speaking to someone. It is over. An anointing is coming on you now. It is over. 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 Shalakata. Over. Madam, be free now. The power of God is touching someone here. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Please help them help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves be free now in the name of Jesus I declare and declare be free. be free be free be free every devil of darkness be free now. please open your heart and receive stretch my hands here anything that help be free now be free now be free now be free now a chain a chain around here i don't know who that person is but i lose you now as i stand here i lose you now by the spirit of the living god i lose you now i lose you now hallelujah overflow one no if i'm able to walk around it's working now please believe it's a few minutes God is touching you you came here so that he will visit you it's impossible to not testify now please look at me overflow too I'm not going to pass in your midst I will walk right here and as I walk the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you thank you Jesus be free now be free now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit now 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 be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Sela kapara to Every reproach, go now, go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please, let your heart be open. Please, accept God is not God whatever it is that has held you as i pass by the spirit the power of god comes on you some of you will be receiving impartation it's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is father in the name of jesus honor your word right now in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus right now be free. i may not be able to move but Please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. 
from the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus I release your destiny now I release your destiny now madam look at me I set her free now release her destiny right now that woman you are holding in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus listen I declare to you I, I release speed inside I want to pray that prayer now I don't know what has slowed you down overflow three from the front to the back may the grace for speed come on you now may the grace for speed come on you now please whether you are an usher or not whether you are an usher or not help anybody under the anointing close to you in the name of Jesus I don't know what has held your destiny bound but in the name of Jesus one more time I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three one two three be free now be free now you came for a miracle service hallelujah hallelujah please look at me overflow three look at me hallelujah the lord is showing me a family i will soon walk out but i just want you to know you are part of and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside the lord is showing me a family here there is a plague of sickness everybody from father to the last child there is nobody who is fine right now as I'm speaking the power of God is coming upon that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ overflow 3 I'm seeing the number 21 this is the healing anointing coming on 21 people Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. This is not a healing miracle. This is the anointing to heal. Right now, from the front to the back, upon gentlemen and upon ladies, receive that grace. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Please, everyone, overflow. One, two, three, main auditorium. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit and declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues. And sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life flames upon your prayer life flames upon your prayer life i declare capacity in your spirit man capacity i swing open the door for utterance in prayer grace to pray in the name of jesus christ someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray hallelujah if you are in ministry i pray again for the grace for prayer let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are not a man of prayer you are not in ministry believe me you are not in ministry it's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry i decree and declare a supply of the spirit an ability from heaven upon men and women of god that anyone who has the call of god upon his life whether you know it or not the grace to pray take it now 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 the grace to travail not give me tea and bread not give me tea and bread to pray destiny altering prayers hallelujah praise the lord we'll quickly minister to the sick now um please listen for those of you who are coming for the first time we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for. We believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk, you're not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online, you can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers or you'll find a few people who will lift up your hands or lift up baskets and you'll be allowed to put it there now very quickly those trusting god to be ministered to um for any kind of healing make your way out quickly just like i've designated please quickly you come stand here by faith overflow one in front of your projector stand overflow three in front of your projector stand overflow two you can join um, those in the main auditorium here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And then overflow 2B and 2C, let me call it now. 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please... Please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags, and any of your belongings is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch, and then you'll be back to your seat. And check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting whatever the situation is whilst they touch and they minister just expect a miracle hallelujah father we give you praise in the name of Jesus within the time we have we pray that your healing power will flow let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In a Jericho, Sir King
name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You're a miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is a strong tower. Jesus, to you belong all power. Whenever I call your name, you will make a way. Your name is a strong tower. Jesus, your name is a strong tower. Jesus, to you belong. Strong These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from it. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your, you see, you cannot, I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had, is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Mm. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From Venice, I'm from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus. Look what is happening. 
let her be healed now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus mama don't cry cancer I speak to you you have a name you have a voice release this lady now in the name of Jesus my friend look at me you came all the way from Thailand in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God this fractured leg I fix it back now you see what is happening to you what do you feel happening to you huh look at me go run Don't mind them, just focus on me. If you're having pain, we're not acting here. Huh? So if you're having any, a miracle has happened to you. When I held your leg, I felt the power of God moving through you. You see, this thing you see is a very demonic thing. It's not about fracture. Do you understand? Number one, come, my friend. You're together too. I want to pray for you. You see, God is looking for people to represent him in every sphere. Huh? Just because you're footballers, doesn't mean that you ignore God many footballers don't love Jesus they love football and they love the money that comes with it but we're not only here God has perfected this let me pray on the x-ray please father in the name of Jesus let this miracle remain forever Amen. I want to pray for both of you I'll, I'll see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you but listen to me I'm sure I don't know you I've never seen you can I prophesy on your career in the name of Jesus the son of the living God from today let the anointing of the Holy Ghost you are a footballer but you play by the anointing my friend it takes more than just kicking a ball I release the grace to excel and for you I release the grace to excel right now two of you will return back to Thailand and the Lord will honor you in Jesus name God bless you Thank you so much for your patience. We're about to pray on the requests. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I truly believe that as we pray on these requests, that every situation that has defied God, it must answer to the name of the Lord. Let her go now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Out now! Who else praise the lord please let's rise thank you for your patience it's a miracle service if you're yet to submit your request please go ahead please go ahead hallelujah we have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation this is this is a revelation that God gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched not everybody can be prophesied to not everybody may be personally ministered to but this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please I want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to I want you to believe because this is representing you before God I want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately pray passionately not done. that Lord this that I'm bringing before you this will be the last I truly believe make sure we collect for those outside 
if you are still being ministered to no problem you can just focus while you are receiving hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord i'm seeing fire burn on this thing i wanted to go down on my knees but i just saw fire burning and the lord said i should declare and speak over it declare and speak over it um there is one gentleman and one lady one gentleman one lady the power of god is coming on two of them the moment that happens then i have the release to speak on this these are signs and wonders my precious people sometimes god does these things and we have no idea why he does them a gentleman and a lady this is the sign that god gave me now i'm ready to pray in the name of jesus believe with me i stand upon this request now and i declare by the power of the holy spirit every request laid before god here i decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of jesus christ hear me the bible says these egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore i declare that everything that defied the name of the lord represented here i declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide i call on the god of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this i'm not sure I, I think koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and i held and i just heard that it was done in the spirit and i said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today i have seen them they are strong they are fine the bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except god instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience i want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it there are just different versions of expressing your need for favor i want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of jesus christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names i decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of jesus
there are requests written here it is mercy that will answer it the bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered i declare mercy upon this request in the name of jesus christ father i stand representing the desires the pain of your people you have done it again and again and we will never take you for granted lord let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of jesus christ the spirit that brought the need for these requests i banish them from your life in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus christ may it please the lord that testimonies will come out of this now please lift your hands we're closing let me speak over your life it is always my honor to do this because i have seen the creative power of the word of god i've seen its ability to turn to change to transform lives there was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week i thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to zaria and testify himself that's why i didn't say it he works in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now i don't know what kind of carelessness happened whether his friends or whatever this gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and i was about to sleep when i got his text he had been calling and i said please send the text and he sent it and i looked at it and he said i'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me on my bed i laid hands and i sent him a text i said find that key that's all i wrote god is my witness i will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit god i say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way don't they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way hallelujah what is strange about an angel of the lord coming to drop a key somewhere didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number he shared here you remember gave him a number he calls a general in the army and they say who gave you my number and he doesn't know who gave him his number bottom line he gets a job as a result look let me tell you there is nothing god cannot do i'm praying for you the dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies In the name of Jesus Christ. A gentleman here, one of the years, checked his name on admission list 
and clearly saw that he didn't get anything he frowned his way to his father who said you are a foolish son i'm not surprised and he came i don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers returns back to the board and checks and there's his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of jesus i connect you to them i connect you to them i connect you to them by the power of the holy spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise joseph you will remain in the prison i pray for you whoever has access to the ears of your helper may god compel them to speak about you in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone trusting god for a job in the name that is above all names please believe and by the power that is in the name of jesus i declare that between now and august by the grace and the name of the lord return with a miracle job hallelujah i pray for those in ministry the fire that must come on a man john wesley says set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn i decree and declare may that fire come upon your life every dying business in this place hear the word of the lord i speak to you come back to life now and to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death i heard a man of god give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying lord i give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of jesus death is a spirit it has a voice it can hear i forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of jesus christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting god to come through for you financially i pray for you may the month of june be your month please believe me may the month of june be your month let the hand of god let the grace of god rest upon you god causing all grace to abound towards you may you have sufficiency in the name of jesus christ every project you have in front of you whether it is a building project whether it's a spiritual growth project whether it's a ministry expansion project whether it's a business project it says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i pray in the name of jesus whatever project you have the grace to execute it let it be given to you now I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of God. You will open your Bible and look at it like this, like a storybook. You can read a book of 600 pages in one week, but you can hardly finish one page 
of the Bible is an attack. I decree and declare. Let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the word of God, may it rest upon you. May it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayer points and we're done. Herein is our Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. The grace for results is called the power of performance. Receive that grace now. I speak to you, produce results. Produce results. Repeated results. Predictable results. In every area of your life. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, let me pray for you. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years, no teeth, he can't talk, you know that something is wrong with that child. Are we true? Your destiny is like a child. If it is alive, then it should grow. When a tree grows and begins to mature, it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit i don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience i declare rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level thank you jesus thank you jesus let me encourage you listen make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that god gives you and be sure to make it a duty to testify let it not be a burden to you are not testimonies don't just endorse that a man of god is anointed testimonies are proof to men to creation to all and sundry that god is love and that he is still mighty testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others it's important to not withhold testimony someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith so be sure that as God touches you you may not have the luxury of coming down to Zaria for those of you who are far but we're on various social media platforms you can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of God praise the Lord still standing everyone our time is gone i want to make an altar call i believe in salvation listen it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter jesus let's settle down please let me have your attention lend me your attention for a minute or two you are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle i've given my life to jesus but i need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the Holy Spirit should already be convicting you. Do not wait for anyone to come. Be the first. Let me for time's sake count one to five. One. Quickly, please, if you're coming, hurry up. 
win that war do not say we came in group and i do not want anybody to know that i'm handing over my life to jesus receiving the life of god is not a funeral service is something that is worth celebrating koinonia are you appreciating them keep coming come to jesus young and old come to him the bible says all who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i don't believe this is all overflow one overflow two join them very quickly and the lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved hallelujah praise the lord make sure that overflow three has uh, the people out god bless you i salute your courage please lift your right hand as i lead you to make this prayer you are not just reciting a poem this is a real um conversation between you and the lord you are receiving his life and you are handing over yours say after me lord jesus say it from the depth of your heart lord jesus some of you come for altar call when we are saying in jesus name you are not born again you should come the, the, the prayer, you don't stroll around and then round up. You don't round up the prayer of salvation. You participate with your heart. Man believes. Are we together? Okay. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you resurrected for me tonight i receive your life i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life i have the life of god and i declare that from tonight i am a child of god i move forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones precious as they are we receive them into the fold the family of faith and i declare their sins forgiven and i declare by the authority of scripture that beginning from today the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them holy spirit i commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives make mighty men and women out of them i bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent may the lord bless you in jesus name i pray amen and amen i salute all of you for making this decision and then for those who also made online thank you for making this decision very quickly i'd like you to follow the someone waving her hands a lady and all of you in concerts please follow her and um, there'll be a group of people to receive you very briefly and you'll be back. Let's honor.